Whales are mammals. While this simple concept was a support to 21st century readers, it was not for most people throughout human history. Even those who are familiar with the shape and behavior of the whales thought of the whales who hunted them as fish. In Moby Dick, Herman Melville allows the hero to enumerate the scientist's beliefs that whales are mammals, but then he says boldly, I took the old-fashioned ground of the whale by shaking all the arguments. A fish in the holy urges Jonah to support me. Quote. This American classic was written in 1851, eight years before the release of another classic that shook the intellectual world of its time, The Origin of Species. In it, Charles Darwin suggested that all species be derived from other species and eventually have a common ancestor. Because whales are mammals and mammalian ancestors are land animals, whale ancestors must have also lived on land. Even Darwin struggled with this concept, and in the first edition of his book he suggested that whales might have evolved from ancestors walking in insect-catching rivers. This teased his readers, and the whale origins were shortened in subsequent editions, until they disappeared completely in the last edition published throughout his lifetime. Indeed, the land strains of whales remained a thorny problem for scientists, because all fossil whales showed purely water features that animals could not live on land during the 19th and 20th centuries. Where were these land ancestors or intermediates of life in the water, creationists demanded, and they called the idea of breast failure that whales were somehow related to cows and their double-toed relatives. All of this changed in the 1990s and 2000s when a remarkable array of fossils was discovered, intermediate animals that show a mixture of soil and water, including water with all modern marine mammals, whales, dolphins, porpoises. The relevant fossil record went from non-existence to perfection and confirmed that the closest cetacean relatives of molecular biologists are indeed artiodactyls, toad hoofs, including cattle, deer, pig, hippo, camel and giraffe. Now there are so many fossils that it has become possible to study evolutionary changes in detail, and it provides an unprecedented understanding of soil adaptations that have turned into water adaptations. Such evolutionary changes occurred in the body. The limbs lost their functions in the body support, but now had to work as locomotor organs in the new, dense environment. The ears had to change because the sound in the water is very different from the sound in the air. The nose returned to his forehead to make it easier to breathe in the sunken state. Since it is not possible to drink fresh water in mammals living in the ocean, the kidneys also changed. And all these changes and others accumulated in a short time in a row, in 8 million years, ancestral ancestors forced marine swimmers from land mammals. This early stage in the cetacean evolution was characterized by great experiments. There were crocodile-like whales, otters-like whales and seal-like whales, and all these body plans were tested and then exhausted, until there was only one body type in the end. This is the same body type found in roughly 90 modern marine mammal species, a mostly aerodynamic body with a necklace, horizontally placed triangular fluke, lacking outer hind legs, and with a paddle foreleg, mostly balding skin, and a nasal opening forming the air hole in the forehead. However, the traces of the ancestors of the ancestral land mammals are still preserved in marine mammal embryos with a different neck, a long and narrow tail instead of a fluke, and posterior limbs protruding from the body. With new fossils and DNA data, molecular biologists have also been able to solve Darwin's annoying problem with what whales are about. DNA evidence points to a specific arteriodactyly closest to the whales, hippo. However, the last common ancestor of hippos and whales dates back 50 million years and did not look like hippos or whales. Fossil proof shows that an agile, deer-like mammal called Indohyus is more closely related to whales. It is possible to derive both marine mammals and hippos from Indohyus or a similar species. Indohyus lived near the northern edge of the Indian subcontinent at a time when the Himalayas were just forming, and the Tethys Sea separated the Indian and Asian land masses, marine mammals appeared here. Indohyus was the size of a cat, but proportionally more like a horned deer. Apparently, Indohyus may be similar to modern moose deer in Africa and Southeast Asia. Rat deer eat fruits and leaves on the forest floor and want to live near small streams. When they perceive the danger, they immerse in water, they are completely submerged. Indoyus's similar survival and avoidance of predators is the first water behavior of ancestors of marine mammals. 
From the chemistry of the teeth, it is clear that Indohyus is a plant eater, and its dense bones show that they function as ballasts, allowing the animals to remain submerged. Elderly individuals have teeth worn with use, and tooth wear is different from the plant eaters involved. In fact, tooth wear is more like that of early meat eating whales. This is an unresolved puzzle, and perhaps Indohyus ate some kind of herbal dish that needs to be processed by flesh like teeth. This feature can help as grandchildren become meat-eating whales. The next step in the evolutionary ladder is the first marine mammal, Pachycetid. Like Indohyus, Pachycetids are known only from Pakistan and India. Although they were the first whales, they were not like modern whales. Instead, they were more like a big dog or wolves. Their fossils are never found only in rocks formed in shallow currents in the ocean, and possibly in these currents are birds or lower marchers of Pachycetids. It shows that their teeth are meat-eating and that their eyes and ears are high in the skull, a feature that deals with spies, such as crocodiles, who often have a sunken body but are interested in things that come out of the water. Terrestrial hunting, Pachycetids are ambush predators, hunting land animals that come to drink water. About 48 million years ago, marine mammals advanced into the ocean. The first known species to do this is Ambulocetus natans. Ambulocetus is known from Pakistan and only one complete skeleton has been discovered so far. While more like crocodiles than Pachycetids, Pachycetids had long limbs that could raise on land, Ambulocetus has spread further. Ambulocetus limbs are short, tail is strong and nose is long. Despite the short limbs, the feet are large and probably the organ that these animals swim in. Although there are many seashells associated with the rocks where Ambulocetus is found, it is clear that there is fresh water nearby. Ambulocetus was probably on the shore, still taking advantage of the thirsty prey that came to drink, as well as going out in the lagoons and surfing. Remingtonocetids, following Pachycetids and Ambulocetus on the branches of evolution in time and to modern cetaceans, are also a family known only from Pakistan and India. The trend towards more aquatic life continues, limbs are shorter than previous whales, and the tail is long and strong. The shape of the vertebrae indicates that remingtonostides are not a fluke, but the tail vertebrae are somehow flattened, which indicates that the tail is flat in the horizontal plane. They probably shook this tail in the water with an upward movement, which is the movement of modern marine mammals to push themselves with their triangular fluke. Some other features are indicative of more aquatic life, Remingtonostides have small eyes, show that they are less important in catching prey, and indeed, rocks with these fossils suggest that many Remingtonostides live in marshes with muddy water. The placement of the eyes is also unusual. Instead of standing above the head to see outside the water, Remington Remingtonosetid eyes are placed next to the head in accordance with the prey of the prey. The part of the skull that houses the Remington Ocetid ear is large, which indicates that they have excellent hearing. Remington Ocetids are likely to use their ears for prey detection, a common feature with modern toothed whales. Remington Ocetid eyes are placed next to the head, consistent with prey water prey. The part of the skull that houses the Remington Ocetid ear is large, which indicates that they have excellent hearing. Remingtonocetids are likely to use their ears for prey detection, a common feature with modern toothed whales. Remingtonocetid eyes are placed next to the head, consistent with prey water prey. The part of the skull that houses the Remingtonocetid ear is large, which indicates that they have excellent hearing. Remingtonocetids are likely to use their ears for prey detection, a common feature with modern toothed whales. Protocetid marine mammals lived at the same time as Remingtonocetids, but in slightly different habitats. In addition to South Asia, Protocetids also conquered the oceans and found continents from Africa to South and North America. Unlike previous families, these implies that Protocetids can pass a large amount of water and are therefore good swimmers. It is a different group with very morphological diversity. It is clear that some protochidides have a tail similar to ambulance tides and remingtonostides, and some may already be a fluke. Unlike remingtonocetids, protocetids are found in areas that show clear, clean water and are big eyes. Protocetids are also the first whales in which the nasal opening was not close to the tip of the nose, although it did not have an air hole as in modern marine mammals, it slipped higher in the skull. They still had strong front and back limbs that allowed them to land and roam on land, and were probably drawn for reproductive functions, similar to modern sea lions. They may be the first marine mammal hunters in open water. 
The first completely aquatic marine mammals and the group from which all modern marine mammals are derived are Basilosaurides. Like protochidids, Basilosaurides are widely distributed worldwide. Basilosaurides have the familiar qualities of modern cetaceans, are aerodynamic, have a fluke, and their forelegs are a racket. Unlike modern whales, Basilosaurides had outer hind legs, but they were so small that they could not bear the weight of the animal, and their function, if any, is uncertain. Some Basilosaurids looked like dolphins, and their lifestyle probably looked like dolphins. The entire evolutionary sequence of little Indohyus, from diving into streams to modern marine mammal-like Basilosaurids, took about 8 million years. Evolution designed new forms, tried and discarded many, eventually only the modern cetacean body plan remained. It is confusing to think that all the different organs, limbs, ears, nose, need to change at the same time, and one wonders how genome changes are required for the accumulation of morphological changes. It is possible to approach this question with such a complete fossil record, a rich variety of modern whales and embryos, and powerful new molecular techniques. Could it be that some changes in the genome affect several different organ systems at the same time, actually creating an evolutionary shortcut that creates highly new morphologies? This is an exciting concept. If we can identify some genes that deal with the development of more than one organ system and show consistent differences between marine mammals and other mammals, we may have identified the fingerprints of the process of marine mammalian origin. Thanks to Hans Thewissen and EARTHARCHIVES.org.